Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great day so far. My name is Dre, I'm the host and founder of The Dragon Network, which is an online community for health IT professionals to share their experiences, exchange ideas, and really collaborate with one another on all things related to healthcare technology. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check out more about that. So in today's video, I'd like to talk about Scrum, which is a project management framework that you can layer over top of other project methodologies to help you have more successful outcomes. The definition of Scrum states that it's a lightweight framework that helps people, teams, and organizations generate value through adaptive solutions and complex problems. The framework was developed in the 1990s during that period of time where there was really an unacceptable lag between the identification of a business need or a business problem and the delivery of the technology solution to solve that problem. Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland first presented the Scrum Framework at a conference that was held in 1995 in Austin, Texas. The framework in their presentation was built around two main concepts or theories. The first being the concept of lean thinking, the second being the theory of empiricism. So that theory really states that knowledge comes from experience and that decisions are to be made based on an assessment of empirical facts and not based on traditions or ideas or hunches that come forward during the decision process. So those are the two concepts that really underline Scrum. And then once we dive into the framework, there are three principles that guide sort of all activities within the framework. So those three principles are transparency, inspection, and adaptation. So transparency, as you can imagine, is exactly what it states. There needs to be transparent communication throughout the entire process. And that transparency is actually not only for the individuals that are working on the project, but for the individuals that are going to receive the end results of the project or the product that's being worked on. The second piece is inspection. So this underlying principle really helps drive home the thought that throughout the entire project process, if it's following the Scrum framework, there needs to be constant and iterative inspection for all the products and artifacts that are being delivered, as well as for all the processes that are taking place throughout the path. So the third and final principle is adaptation. And with this one, there needs to be a focus throughout the project on anything that's falling outside of the framework or anything that's changing along the way so that it can be assessed and incorporated into the overall activities that are occurring. So now let's take a look at how Scrum really works. So the process of Scrum is built around the concept of sprints, which are short durations of activity, one month or less in length, that actually are going to package work products or tasks and activities that are related to the overarching project goal and deliver things in an iterative manner. So whether that's functionality for end users or artifacts to the project will really depend on what you're working on. But the overall concept of breaking things down into these one month or less increments and sort of repeating a process over and over is what really drives the framework. So each particular sprint, like I said, needs to be one month or less in length, and it's gonna follow some consistent patterns. So first there's gonna be a scrum team that works on a particular sprint. So the scrum team is going to consist of a scrum master who's going to oversee the process and ensure that it's actually staying in alignment with what was determined to be within the scope of that sprint. There is a product owner. So the product owner is the individual who's going to represent the business and the key stakeholders that are going to receive the work product so that they can make sure that there are alignments between the requirements and the delivery artifacts. And then there's a team of developers or of analysts that are gonna be working on the actual outputs and doing the work. So the total team for each sprint, each scrum team that exists is gonna be usually 10 people or less. You don't want the team to be too big or it can get too difficult to actually do the iterative process. You want it just to be the individuals that are focused on actually achieving the goals of the sprint. And you of course are gonna communicate using that transparency principle with your stakeholders and your business all along. But the real sort of uh, heart of the scrum is this team that's gonna work on these continuous sprints. Now, you may have with a very large project and especially some of those in healthcare, multiple scrum teams that are actually working on the same project. So they're working towards the same overarching project goal, but they're gonna work on different packages of delivery and some may even be working independent of each other. So some of them are gonna interrelate and are going to have to you know, collaborate with one another at certain times and some of them are really gonna be packaged off. During each sprint that occurs, there are a defined set of elements that actually have to be included in order for the sprint to be complete. So the first one is planning, 
And with this sprint planning, you're going to take the backlog of items or the total list of deliverables that are being requested or asked for. And the project team is going to look at which ones can be bundled together and should be rolled up into a sprint. So the entire backlog is what they're going to work through. It doesn't mean that as these iterative sprints keep going, that every single item in the project plan or every single item within the project backlog is going to be incorporated into a sprint, but it does mean that they're going to consider them so they can package things off into sprint type cycles. So once it's been decided what the goals of the sprint are and what work is included in the sprint, the next thing that's going to get set up is a daily scrum meeting. So this daily scrum meeting typically happens first thing in the morning. It should be the same time and the same place every day so you maintain consistency. And it's a 15 minute huddle, if you will, to talk about what it is that the scrum team, so that group of 10 or less, needs to get accomplished for the day, whether they have any challenges that they're anticipating, whether they need help with anything, and whether they are on track. So it's a quick status update, a quick check-in to make sure you're going forward and that that transparency is maintained. So once most of the work is delivered and it's all packaged together, the next piece of the sprint cycle is going to be the sprint review. So that sprint review is really going to take a look at what the work product or the work artifact is to make sure it does in fact align with the goals, to assess whether or not it meets the needs of the stakeholders as they believed it was going to meet and whether it functions correctly. So it's really that inspection type piece that occurs within the sprint cycle. Once that's taken place, there's also a sprint retrospective that happens. So this sprint retrospective is a quick look at the actual sprint cycle itself. And if there's anything that occurred within this particular sprint that could benefit from some tweaking or some adjustments to make things more efficient going forward. So this can be anything from the way things were communicated, how staff members interacted with each other, whether they had the right people assigned to things, whether there was external priorities that were impacting time, all different things are going to be considered in this retrospective, but it is quite a short effort. So it's not something that's meant to go on for, you know, hours and hours and hours or days and days and days. So with that, you'll wrap up the sprint. And immediately after one sprint wraps up, the next one is going to kick off and you'll go straight into the planning phase. And that will continue as many times as necessary and with as many teams as is necessary to deliver the overall project goals. So again, this framework is meant to sort of layer on to your other project methodologies where you would deal with all your you know, communication and stakeholder management, your project timelines, your work breakdown structures and things like that. It's just meant to have a continuous cadence and to keep that relationship between the clients or the end users and the project team sort of moving forward and understanding that things are continuing to be delivered while they're in the midst of a large project. So Scrum is typically not utilized in healthcare on things that are really, really tiny. It's used for those mid-sized projects. With the very, very large projects, so the multi-year EHR implementations, for example, Scrum might be applied to a component of a project, but it is very, very rarely applied to the entire thing. And the teams in healthcare that tend to utilize Scrum most frequently are the technical teams. So they tend to respond quite well if there is a Scrum frameworks put in place, they like the independent working through the day and just the check-in in the morning, as opposed to being overwhelmed with meeting after meeting after meeting. The other time I've seen Scrum utilized, and it's really just portions of Scrum that get utilized here, is if you're in the middle of a major incident or you have a significant issue that's impacting one of your systems. So in order to move forward and to correct whatever it is that's going wrong, there needs to be you know, breakout teams that are going to focus on different things, and there needs to be that consistent, iterative, strong transparency, strong inspection, strong adaptation that goes through that to get to your end result. So if you're interested in learning more about Scrum, there's a ton of different resources out there. And if you have any questions about how Scrum applies directly to healthcare, let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can provide some more examples or if I can help you out with your question. That's all I have for this week and I will talk to you again soon. Have a great day.